What a beautiful morning. Sitting out here thinking about some of the other YouTube channels like Epic Gardening. He's already done his big harvest. I did mine a little while ago, but I pick as I need. And James with Tuck, the gardening channel. Oh, Kitty loves Tuck. Well, he's got to get his out before the snow comes in. Wait a minute. Why am I sitting here thinking about that when it's October 1st? I gotta go do a garden tour. Oh my goodness. Why, hello everybody. It is Robbie from Southern California. I'm sitting here having coffee, realizing it's October 1st. Let's go do a garden tour and let's whip around and tell you what's coming and what is, well, what's going on. Look at this. It's still so early that none of these flowers on the red roselle or roselle red everybody's got a different way of calling it has opened yet the sun is just starting to come out and so these open when the sun is shining on it and then in the evening they close but they only open the one time once they close they're done let's walk over here and talk about what's going on as you know this is one of my favorite setups one of them and well i'm gonna have to say it was a great success the only issue, let's talk about issues today, that I did here was having too many plants in one small container. Now you can get those containers, those totes. Oh, you can get them like 30 gallons and on up. Those are 18s. But I just have to pace myself next year. And when something comes up, I have to be diligent and pull it out. So what it did was it knocked out my watermelon out of here. And then the tomatoes took, no, those were the tomatillos took over and the tomatoes took over in there. My cucumbers went part way through the season, which was great, but the tomatoes kind of pushed out the cucumbers because you really can't grow that many things inches from each other, the base of the plant that is. But you know what? I am absolutely happy with this. And if all works out, I may have tomatoes all winter long because they are still going. We're picking and picking. And as you can see, they are still growing and growing. Isn't that wonderful? The squash did okay, but not as good here for some reason. But I did find out when that one died the other day, I went in there. I couldn't believe it. I had no idea that the roots had gone from one of these trees here and had gone inside one hole just one hole and it actually strangled or killed the plant. Some trees can give off a substance to kill other plants around them. I'm not sure, but it killed the squash plant, literally, like overnight. So we know that, look at these, I keep picking them. I don't want to touch them, they'll fall off and I, I don't have to bring them in right now, but I've got purple, purple, and I've got the green tomatillos. And they came up in here, there's two plants in there. And then I've got walking onions. All right, let's keep going. This is finally done. That's from my original video on composting in place. That tote is four, five years old, four years old at least. This is all set up now the way I want it. Everything you see down here, I have really not done too much, is set up. So I can now sit back, have a cup of coffee, and map out what I want to do. Yeah. That's not going to work for me. You know that because I could tell you I'm going to grow this in there and then last minute I changed my mind. But it's all done. So this is great. My potatoes are coming up. These are my potatoes. I had them in the house. They started to go bad and I realized, oh, I've got to get them in the ground. So I put them in the bucket and they just took off. So we'll see what happens. I'll tip them out and hopefully I'll get enough that I can maybe spread potatoes here. That is zucchini coming up, Black Beauty. We'll see what happens. Those are all those papaya plants. I have done nothing with them and they just keep getting bigger and bigger. I don't want to leave them because they'll try to grow and end up a massive tree there. I'm not, still not sure what I'm going to do, so let's keep walking. Here, again, I've got zucchini growing in here and I've got cucumber. I really don't think any of the cucumbers are going to make it. Even though they are growing and they start starting the vine out and I've seen flowers coming, we had some really cold nights this week that were so cold I needed two blankets. It was really cold and they don't like the cold. A lot of these plants are just not happy with the cold. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do anything with this, but these are lettuce seed heads. I'm gonna crush them and see if there's anything left in there. So I kind of collected those and put them there. All right, purple tree colored. This has been great. I keep picking. The eggplant keeps throwing flowers and it just keeps on growing. So that's been great. There's peppers on here, multiple peppers I saw on there. See the top? 
And then here, I nothing. And as you can see, I haven't, there's the black cobras, Malabar spinach. I've got garlic chives, more pepper starting, tomatoes. Tomatoes doing really good. Oh, look, I just saw some big tomatoes back here. That must be coming off of the Goliath. Yep, that's coming off the, the old Goliath trunk. Look at the trunk on it, how big it is. And it, I was going to pull it out, but it's still doing good. There's the black beauties. Aren't they beautiful? Or purple beauties, I think they call them. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Like I said, here I haven't done anything. Didn't really do anything this year, but it's lined up, it's ready. This is new. You saw me put that up. I'm really happy with it. I looked at those three totes I had here. Those are from the thrift store. And I thought, you know, I'm wasting them because those are stackable. Those are really strong. They're built with extra strong sides. And I figured I'm going to do this. So it worked out really good. I've got Swiss chard in there and walking onions. I've got some sorrow in there. Here's the other Goliath tomato my daughter got me last year. And then there's garlic chives there. Nothing in here. See what I'm doing? Now this is what you can do. See? You could start to set up no matter where you are and start throwing leaves and stuff in there. And come spring, you'll be almost ready to just go for it. Or you will be ready. This is baby leeks. They came off the plant. And see what I did here? This is lettuce. I use this as a top dressing, like to cover it. A ground cover, a mulch. And if there's any lettuce in there, I'll pull them out and move them. So that, we'll see what happens with that. Nothing new here. Here is more lettuce I just planted. Just put it on the chair so the rabbits won't... Oh, cool! Cool, cool, cool. Look, 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 look. Is that cool? I wonder if I want to keep it uncovered. I've had it covered for the past three days. See what I did? I took the old tool off of somewhere. And I didn't want it to lay directly onto the soil I put in there. I top dressed it with potting soil. So I laid the tool on top so no birds would eat it. And I think I'll leave it right now. That is really cool. It wasn't there yesterday. And then here, nothing. But this has been good. Four sticks stuck in the corner. A little clothespin. And look at this. I've got lettuce in there. Something had gotten to one of the lettuce. So what I did was I covered it. And it's worked out fantastic. I want to make lettuce and something, you know, a salad or something. I pick it and boom, it's almost like overnight. I've got more lettuce growing back. There's my compost tea, tomatoes. So there's really a tomato plant. Came. Oh, she's got a tomato. It's got tomatoes on it. Keep in mind, I did not plant this plant. But you know what? I am definitely going to keep it in that bucket right there. More tomatoes, carrots. I did the same thing here. I'm sprinkling lettuce. No, I didn't. Yes, I did a little bit, but I did put in, this is a grass. This is grass. I did put in some walking onions in here. So we'll see what happens there. This is carrot and this is carrot seed, and I really should collect the carrot seed. Haven't decided what I'm gonna set up here. And then here are the three totes. I had cabbage in here last year. And I'm, I was gonna plant cabbage, but look how good the tomatoes are doing. I staked them up with tomato steaks, see? This has worked out so well for me. And then I just tied on branches. Gary was trimming some trees, so I grabbed some branches. And look how neat and how well it's working. Didn't cost me anything. The tomato steaks, you could pick those up at the dollar stores in the spring. Like there's two tomato steaks for a dollar. And you can get, or you can get them online. I, I even bought a bunch on Amazon and I bought some on eBay last year and they work really good, but those go in the ground because they're plastic coated. Otherwise, you could stick this in the soil, but it's gonna break down because being a dead branch, Mother Nature will pull it back. But this way, look at that. It didn't, the top didn't cost me anything. Tie down with yarn, you could use masking tape as, as well, it doesn't matter, and that will last for a long time. Isn't that gorgeous? So I've got some basil back there. Isn't it funny? The basil came up because the lid came off. of something. I had thrown it in there. I was using it for something. And the basil seed got in there. And nothing, no roly-polies could get to the basil. So the basil, see, grew through. You know, there is a tomato plant there. And I'm thinking I should take that out. Because it will kill the basil. I'm going to keep the basil. Yeah, I'm going to really be harsh and do this and with this 
Maybe I'll come back and find the place for it or I'll compost it. I've got some lettuce coming up in here. But I think that's cute. A lot of times you lose your seedlings because of small insects that are in the soil. They eat the new seedlings that come up. But as soon as they get their main leaves, that's usually when the problem stops and they stop eating the seedlings. And if you can protect the seedlings just for a short time, then you're good to go. And then of course more tomato plants. Okay, so that's it. Let's go now into the front yard because, well, you know, it, there may not be that much, and some of you are saying, well, there's not much here. There's plenty of food for us, and I didn't do anything this year. Just little tiny things like stacking and, and cleaning up a little, but I'm not cleaning. When I go through, I can sit down with a chair and take all the brown leaves off. What I'm doing is I'm building free soil because every single brown leaf, including that tomato plant I pulled out, is my new soil I'm building, and it all builds perfectly. Let's go into the front yard. Now the sun is going to come up and be in my face. Okay, everything here is doing good. The tomatoes are doing good. I've got a broccoli plant. I believe that's one there. I've got some squash growing in here. All that's doing good. I've got a little celery I pulled out from somewhere and just stuck it there. Haven't done anything in here because I don't need to. Let's see. The lime, the little finger lime is doing good. We've got finger limes all over it. And that needs to be trimmed out. I haven't done that yet. This is going crazy. This is a geranium plant that is planted in a little coffee, you know, jar, plastic container that you get coffee in. And I've been feeding it my compost tea. Make sure that cover's on. And then of course there's the purple tree colored. But by giving it a scooper, I have this scooper here right now, this plant just took off. It was a little tiny plant, look how big it is. It's going all the way over, all because of the compost tea. Sweet potato, more squash in here. You see lots of flowers, and I have been picking zucchini. And then let me step back so you can see. I got a coco zell there. I picked one the other day. I've got tomatoes going through here. I see signs of hornworms. We're going to start, oh, I see a hornworm. Look at that, I'm gonna leave them right now. Look at that. I think some bird will find them. The problem is the Orioles have left. They have left Southern California. They are my insect eaters. Now we have bush tits and other birds that eat hornworms and all different bugs, but they get them when they're small. If they miss them, well, then they don't get them because the bush tits are smaller than that hornworm, so they're not gonna eat it. A mockingbird will, I've seen them pull them off, but it's, it is the Orioles that do the job for us. We don't spray anything, we don't use anything on there. The only thing I use to deter pests is tool. That's basically it. I don't do anything else. I don't, I don't buy anything else. Let's see, what else? Gotta still go through all the soil that I had collected here from other totes and things. That's a fig tree. I it came up from seed. Walking onions, all the garlic chives are there. This is red vein sorrel that went to seed. See? And then we've got a collard there and I've got a broccoli there. And this is beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is my tomato plants. They came up on their own. My goodness, that helicopter's loud. Might have to wait till it goes by. Oh! See the tomatoes drop? See this? This is tomatoes. See how easy tomatoes grow? You just take a tomato and squish it. This one dropped and the flesh from the tomato, see I saw one on the ground. Let me show you real quick so you know this. Everybody worries about washing everything off. When you drop a tomato or mother nature drops a tomato, say a bird or something got that one. What happens is the outside of the tomato, the flesh, the meat of the tomato, that becomes part of, let's say, the plant food. It uses that to grow. So the whole tomato is important. Now, if you took this tomato or another one and threw it aside and waited until spring, you could take an old dried out tomato and throw it somewhere and it will grow. And that's why I end up with tomato plants everywhere. So either way will work. By dropping fresh, it has its own compost and it will grow that way or by leaving it on a table 
I saw somebody once leave it in a bird cage. He had a bird cage hanging in his yard and he loaded up different fruits and vegetables he was not going to use, threw them in the bird cage where no birds or rats or anything could get to him. And he said in the spring he collects them, he throws them all over and he ends up with the plants that he wants to grow. So that's another old fashioned, different way of collecting seeds. But I'm gonna end up not doing this because that is 100 plants growing in one spot. And this is a geranium plant and I have not given it any plant food. See how small it is compared to that one? That one is sitting there and I just scoop out and put it there. So the plant food really does work. Let's see, let's walk through here. Like I said, nothing new, but you know, looking pretty good. It's nice to come out here, sit here really early in the morning because the sun comes here first. This is all morning sun. Tool is still hanging in there. I just got to get in there and freshen this up. I've got some walking onions that have walked. Garlic chives growing in there. So I need to freshen it up a little bit. Look at this. Is this beautiful? I have given it a little bit of plant food. I really need to make a plant food station here with the buckets I do right there and keep feeding them because I fed this the other day and it, they just popped into so much greenery. You can't even see it and I can't get back far enough. It is so green and so lush. It's unbelievable. Look how thick and green everything is in there. I just, I, I sit back. I even sit here sometimes on these benches that Gary picked up out of the trash, just looking at it and thinking, oh boy, I'm gonna harvest this when it, the time comes. Where in the world am I gonna put it all? Because I would like to grow more. I wanna freeze some to eat and then eat it fresh. So we've got the black turmeric. And you know, I bought it and I still don't eat it. It's more of a medicinal type of turmeric and they have different reasons of eating it. It even brings luck and different things. So it's kind of um, more of a religious thing, I think, or mythical. And then you've got the regular turmeric, which is some people call it orange, some people call it yellow. Mine, the way they grow and I feed them with, with collard leaves and stuff from the garden, they grow a real rich orange. And then of course the ginger, and this is all the ginger back here growing. So I've got so much of it, I've got to figure out where I'm gonna plant it. Cause I would like to plant more, but I do know that, look how beautiful. It loves morning sun. See, the sun hasn't come through the trees yet. It's just come up and the sun is there. It still has to pass up these trees and then it gets, gets a good few hours of light here. And then it drops down depending on what time of the year. It could be, it could be 1230, it could be two o'clock. It doesn't matter, but it doesn't get the hot afternoon sun and that's what it doesn't like. So knowing that, I can grow as much as I want. See, even here, we're talking feet over. You talk about microclimates. See there? Gary said, why don't you plant it there under the, the window? Well, here's the thing. This gets more sun. It gets about two hours, three hours extra sun. I don't know if it's going to work. So I've got to find the place that gets the right amount of sun. I was thinking even this table that Gary found in the trash, I think I'm going to put walking onions there because I think this gets too much sun too. So we'll, we'll find some place. But I don't harvest my ginger or turmeric until the right time for me. I can harvest it now, absolutely. You can harvest it right now and it's called green ginger. That is beautiful to eat. But the thing is when the leaves start to go brown, really brown, we're not talking about the edgings from you know, the heat that we've had. I'm talking about when the leaves start to go brown, there's no more new growth. See all the new growth coming through? All this is throwing new growth. That means all the energy from the tubers are going, the rhizomes are going into the leaves. What you want, or I want, I don't know what you want, but what I want is I want the energy to go back into the rhizomes. That means it's got the best potential as far as nutrients and everything in there because everything's been pulled back. It is storing up like an egg. It is storing up everything it needs to survive all winter long. It's the winter it doesn't like and it sometimes it doesn't even grow back until mid to late spring because it really likes warm nights. So I'm gonna wait 
and then when it comes to that point, I'm going to do a full harvest. Do I have to do a full harvest? No. If we don't have a lot of rain, it will be fine sitting here as it did this year. I didn't harvest this year. I did a few. It would be perfectly fine, but what it doesn't like is wet cold. So if it's wet and it's cold, it will rot. If it's wet and it's a little warm, it could rot. But if it's not real wet and it's just damp, then it will do fine. It will sit there and then when the time is right, it will grow. These are the little skin cuttings that are coming up. That I showed you how you could do the skin cuttings by peeling it. it. There's a new growth coming up from a piece of skin right there. It grows just as good. It's good to have the whole rhizome because it gets bigger. But if you're eating it, why not peel that little piece off and grow it? It might take an extra year to get that big rhizome in it, but it doesn't matter. You would have eaten it, so now you got an extra plant. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, let's go into the bird garden and see what is going on. Because though I haven't done much yet, there's a lot going on. I have watermelon. Looky, looky. And there's one down there, and I know you can't see it, but it's way down there. I picked a humongous one of my biggest squash came out of here and I didn't even plant this squash plant. I didn't plant it. I, it came up, I, you know, I compost in place and it came up on its own. And I looked oh, a few days ago and it was like, oh my gosh. And there's more in there. I know you're not going to be able to see it. But there is more in there, believe you me. There's another one down there, but there's watermelon through here. And that was really what it was for. The soil that I make is way too rich for the ubes. Though the ubes grew, look how bad they grew, it's too rich. Ubes that are in the, you know, like the yams and all, they don't want really super rich soil. Not super rich. It's kind of like carrots and radishes. You make them too rich, you have green tops. Well, that's what I ended up with the ubes, but that's okay. If I don't add anything else to it, well, then they'll grow next year. Or I just move them. I'll probably just move them. So that's doing good. This is a tree colored. I don't know what made it burst. Maybe the plant food I started making because it was small and it just took off and it's in a pot. This is interesting. It's a layered pot. It's a pot in a small tote. There's a small tote back there. I've got some geraniums back there. I've got Malabar spinach. We have been eating dragon fruit. So much dragon fruit. Here's the dragon fruit. Got more down. Oh, we've got more to pick. You probably can't see it. Oh, Gary's got a flower. Okay, I'm gonna have to tell him that. He may not have known. But there is a flower down there. He probably didn't know it opened, and that is not good. I'm going to actually have to tell him very soon, because if it closes and he didn't pollinate it, we won't get it. There's another dragon fruit back there. We've had so much dragon fruit, it's unbelievable. But everything is doing good. Let me show you here. Here are these containers you've seen. They're, they're older containers, and they're doing really good. Every year, my mushroom plant in the winter dies back. Well, I thought... It was dying back this one because it was cold. I think it's not the cold at all. I think it's the sun. The sun has moved and it gets sun here because in the summer, if I step back, you'll see against the house they shaded because it doesn't go, you know, the sun goes up over. Well, now that we're in fall, the sun is coming back this way. And I realize that it's getting full sun now and it's starting to turn yellow. So when it got really hot last week, I put this up this is this I was using in the chair garden, and the plant did not die back. Usually it dies back fairly quick. So I'm thinking it's me that was hindering that plant. So we'll see. I'll have to get something sat there better. This, is, this was a quick contraption that I made with just some material and a t-shirt. And it's just in any pot. So you can use a pot to hold your tomato steaks. It works really, really good. And this way I can keep it from getting too much sun. Nothing with nothing is going on here. And this will be a project that I'll come in one day and do. I want to, I don't want to overchange it because I'll upset the birds. But I want to get, oh, look how green it is. I didn't spend enough time in here. Look how green. I want to get this set up for birds. So I'm going to get more flowers. These are some zinnias. I threw it in a pot a few seeds in the new way with the tool and they grew and I stuck them there so I'm trying to figure out where to put them. I've got this I moved. This was a small plant. I think if you look back at the last garden tour a month ago, this was a little tiny plant. It's actually in the ground. It's a hybrid colored of some sort and it grew tall and I had it and I didn't want it so I stuck it in there and I've been feeding it compost tea and watering it good and boy has it taken off. 
Then I've got the purple tree colored all through here and I've got lemon verbena and dinosaur kale. Isn't this gorgeous? So I think I'm going to get a lot of dinosaur kale and the purple tree colored. Purple tree colored to me is really, really important. Any tree colored because it makes the best compost tea. You can use anything. You've asked me, can you use this leaf? Can you use fig leaves? You can use anything you want, but I'm telling you, microbes really love collard. And boy, does that plant food make the plants grow everything. I've even given a little bit to this rose bush I had forgot about that was back there, and it's already throwing roses. Got to clean all this up. This is my garlic coming up from last year or early in the spring that I didn't move to. This is just lettuce. I'm kind of leaving the lettuce head there in case there is really lettuce seed in there and a few, if a few pop up they're easy to move. See even in here look a little piece of collard or kale the seed got in there and it's growing but this is a little bit of lettuce there see? But this is garlic so we're going to have to go through there. This is just spearmint growing on the ground but look at I've got roses just opened this morning. This is a very special rose bush to me for multiple reasons, but I bought this one quite a few years ago at the dollar store. And the reason I selected that one, it was sitting there with all the roses, for it was like $1.99 they had it. It's gonna open up more. There's no thorns. It's completely thornless. So I wanna do cuttings off of that, and I'll get them going either in the house or in the totes, and I would like to grow more of that rose. I've got another rose back here that I did do cuttings. And this is, it grows very wild and all over, and Gary doesn't like it. You put it in the ground, it doesn't stop growing. It grows a little open red rose, but you know what? I like it, and, but it does have thorns. It's full of thorns. So I did two cuttings here. Isn't that beautiful back here? I've got to get all the seed heads off. So anyways, that's what's going on in here. So let's keep going, because there really isn't anything. We've got the fountains, they're just starting to go on. Those, that's what, that one's electric, but see, they're just starting to burp because the sun is now coming up above the trees. <sighs> wow. I've got, this got so big, this colored plant, or whatever you want to call it, kale plant, that it's breaking. So I've got to go through and trim off what I want. As long as it's still attached to the mother plant, and it barely is, you can see it bar it's broke, but it barely is, it's still getting nutrients from it, so I can take my time and decide what part I want of the plant and do cuttings. Because once I take it off, I've got to do it right away. So it gives me time to work with it. Lemon balm. Look at all the walking onions. I think I'm going to go around. I'm going to get a bunch of totes set up. And I'm just going to collect walking onions. I probably will collect... I don't know. I should collect them and count them. The problem is, if you're in an area where you get cold, it's too it's really too late to put outside once they're established like if you plant them in the spring and you get snow you can leave the walking onions there in the ground they'll go dormant in the ground because the ground won't dry them out I always tell you the walking onions don't let the babies dry out because when they dry out see if there's any here when they dry out they're dead now this is still alive it's got green growth but you'll look around and you'll find other ones I think I'll put this in my pocket and bring it in when you find other ones that are dried out, they're no good. They cannot dry out, so they would have to be stored in a kind of a damp area. But in the ground, with the snow cover over the ground, that's perfect. And then when the snow melts, they just take off. So they are great to have in the ground. Look at that. This is my favorite plant. I've talked about that. And I do have to get a lot of cuttings. I have one on my deck. This thing gets so beautiful. It's so deep green blue. But I think it's a three-way. I think it's a cross between a dazzling blue kale, which I've got growing right here, and a collard plant. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe collard, maybe dinosaur kale, because it's got traits from all of them. But the only, it, hasn't, it did go to seed. That's right. I did have a few seeds on it, but I didn't collect any seeds. The birds got them. And that's okay because I want to do cuttings. Because if I would have collected the seeds, then who knows what it would have looked like because it would have hybridized with something else that's in here. But I like that plant. Okay. Another tree colored. This is a cutting that I didn't know was going to take from that 15 foot tree colored that was there. It used to be here up in the air. Well, that's part of it there. That's part of it there, and from the original one that was, was in the ground where I buried it in the ground. It worked. So we've got that one going. And then I took a branch that was almost dead, 
I really, it looked like it was rotting, and I didn't know it was going to grow, but it is growing. So I'm going to let it do its thing right there with the walking onions, and I've got eggplant back there. This is dazzling blue kale. Beautiful plant. Unfortunately, the goldfinches like it too. So if I don't cover it when they're coming through and attacking, they will eat the entire plant. Four o'clock's dying back there. That's just a flower. It's not edible. And I planted another purple tree collard there. See, it's still in the pot, but the pot's got massive holes underneath. So I'm going to let it grow there. Just dropped it in there and it will kind of give a good place for birds to hide and then for me to go collect, well, collect leaves for plant food as well as when I want to eat it. Let's see what's going on here. I've got, as you can see, these are the smaller strawberry papaya still growing. This is also in a pot. It's a purple tree collard. And this is just sitting here because I'm not sure yet where I'm going to put it. I think I'm going to move that tower and plant it there. And these things have been in here for years and they just sit. So, I'm, you know, I'm just some sort of colored or kale. Or, I'm just going to pull them out. I'm going to put them directly in the ground. They're going to have freedom. They're going to be able to grow and spread their wings or feet or roots. But I think I'm going to put them in the ground and get rid of that. See, I've got a lot of hornworm damage. I haven't gone through and removed the hornworms. The tomatoes are still growing even with the hornworms eating them, but I don't see, I looked yesterday, I did not see a hornworm here. So a bird could have come by, but it's so odd. They also can move down, hide in the pot and then come back during the day. But we still have a lot of tomatoes everywhere. And then let's see what else. Walking onions back there. This was an old nursery. I collected a whole bunch once and I put them here and they are throwing babies. See, let me see if I have any. See, this is just barely going to make it. And when they're really small, they do not make it. So that's why you want to get them off and you want to get them in pots. Even if you had them in pots in the winter in the house in a sunny window, that will work. But if you try to store them, I know there's a lot of you that say, oh no, you can store them. Well, then you're storing them in a place that's not too dry. Let's, let's go through the gates. But if you try to store them where it's too dry, they just won't make it. And then there's been so many. I cannot believe a hundred comments where they bought them and they bought them as small bulbs like this. And then once they planted them, they were all dead. Yeah, because somebody stored them and sold them to them and they got them and they don't store. All their energy is in here. These are meant to grow now. These are not storable. These are not regular onions. It's a very unique onion. It's actually, I believe it's a hybrid and you don't ever want to buy seeds from walking onions because there is no such thing. All right, Rainbow Garden. Strawberries are being changed. So still getting some strawberries, but I think I'm going to change it up this spring. My potato mint. I'm quite anxious to get in there, but again, the potato mint, just like the ginger and the turmeric, I dig that up when it dies back and it will die back. So I will dig it up then. This is just some garlic coming up that I didn't pick. And nothing else done in here. Um, no, this tomato plant came up on its own and it's a good sized tomato, so I'm going to leave it. It's doing quite well. It's probably pulling too much from, from this, the squash, but that's okay. The squash are done. What's in here? Oh, look, the I just set this up. Look, 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 you get to see with me. You see the worms? I did not put worms in here. Can you see that? Come on, move. Don't make a liar out of me. Look at that. I did not, hey, let's cover them back. This is just those ice cream containers. So there's holes on the bottom there. Then there's soil in here, cause I'm gonna probably, you know what? I'm gonna probably put some walking onions in there. These things, let's see if I've got a stick. I'm gonna do this one handed with you. You're gonna watch me plant. Just some soil, look at that. You put a walking onion there. And I'm going to be able to lift that and drop some collard leaves in there. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna have muddy hands doing the garden tour. And look at that. See, so that's what, this is a two system like the bucket I did. Let's see if I can wipe my hands on my clothes because that's why I wear dirty clothes around here. So now I can lift this up. I can add in some leaves. I can lift it for a minute so you can see. Oh, look at all the worms in here too. And what happens is I water this. It goes into the leaves where the earthworms are and they're underneath as well. 
they're doing their thing, which is now the microbes and everything are there feeding this wonderful tomato plant that is just doing fantastic. And I don't have to do anything. I don't have to even put any plant food in there. It's making its own. All right, so we've got all this broccoli, which I've got to go through and collect. And then I ended up with only one Korean melon on here. I think the weather has changed. Korean melon really likes the heat. Though we've had a couple hot days, we've, our nights are starting to get too cold. Really good to grow in the desert area where it still stays warm at night. But here I ended up with one and I'm happy with one. I can kind of maybe make some microclimates next year and get more going. There's a couple beets left in here, but right here I've got the broccoli. I'll bring some broccoli in for Kitty. She absolutely loves broccoli. This I'm just starting a cutting off of my purple kale, my curly purple kale, the Russian red I think it's called. And there is still garlic in there. I missed some garlic. This is the pepino. Now the pepino, the cutting I took from Gary's garden is going to stay. I'm going to leave this and this will grow for years. Look, it's going to start more flowers there. And then here, look at this. I've already got pepinos. And I really have to learn more to do with it. I know you can chop it up using stir fry. Gary likes leaving it. And when it turns kind of yellowish, it looks like an egg. It's sweet like a melon. So you can eat it either way. But that's staying there. So I don't have to do anything with that tote. I've got my black cobras. And then I've got, you know, some uh, kale in there. And nothing has to be done. Isn't that nice? You can plant things where you, look at this, where you do not have to keep replanting and replanting. They have been here for over a week and they're just causing problems everywhere. They go into people's avocado trees and they are dropping avocado trees everywhere. The watermelon I'm gonna say is done. I'm gonna to have to harvest it. This is done. I tend to let it turn brown. See the curly thing here? Okay, when this turns brown, it is brown. You can see it's off. This is done. But I have found, let me move the leaf. I have found by leaving it an extra week, they're super sweet. So I'm going to get that one off and there's a, there's a few more back there I've got to get off or very soon. And then the mustard is doing fantastic. You saw me set this up with the walking onion. Now I've got the same thing. You lift the yellow bucket and then I can put anything I want, leaves, mustard leaves, anything I want in there, kitchen scraps, and it has fed all this and that's why this is fantastic. I do see this is Korean melon. Or maybe I'll end up with a couple more Korean melon. There could be some even hiding in. Oh, yes! I didn't know! Look, 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 look! Okay, this is, this is exciting. I didn't know there is more. So there is more Korean melon coming through this way. And I'm wondering if it's where it's growing from. If it's growing in here? I don't know. Wait a minute! Oh, Okay, so there are some more melons for me to go through and look at. Okay, celery. I think that's also garlic chives. Not garlic, so garlic in the back, yes, I've got more garlic. I didn't pick it all, so even though it went completely dormant and just gone in the summer, it popped back. That's what I'm saying, I store my onions that way. Originally, all my onions were in that red tote. I planted like 25 onions in there, and I slowly picked them as I needed them, and then when I knew I was gonna plant the watermelon, I took them all. But I've got on my deck a whole bunch of onions still left, and I store them in the ground. I don't overwater it, so you just give it a little bit of water to the soil so it's barely damp, and it dries out. if it dries out a little bit, that's fine. And then I pull them when I need them. Can you imagine I can store onions in the ground for three, four, five months without a problem? You can't store them too long because once the weather is right, they'll grow, like now. But you can store onions that way. You bring them in the house, put them on the counter, they're gonna rot. Nature's pulling it back, it's out of the soil, it's a dead plant, not growing, it's gonna rot. Put it in the fridge, you change the composition of onions. You build up the sugars. But if you leave it in the ground, well, that's the way I do it, you've got onions growing beautiful. Okay, tomato plant's gonna probably do something different there. Here, I'm gonna leave the roselle. I might try something to see if I can get it to grow all winter, because I found that in some areas. They are not an annual, they are a perennial. So I don't know if it'll work, but we'll see what I'm gonna do. And I probably will get everything else around it out. Oh look, I've got a pepper. Isn't that funny? Get, uh, especially the tomato plants, get them out and then see what I can do with that. And what else is here? Oh, and then my pizza garden. I haven't made pizza for a while. I've gotta make pizza. I've got the sage. I've, my thyme, I think, died back or it's very small in there, but I've got purple and green basil. 
I've got some oregano left in there. More basil. Basil spread itself. It was dropping seeds and kept growing. I've got tricolored sage. This is a cutting I put in there. I've got walking onions in there. And of course, on the top, not do I just have basil, but I've got the peppers. Look how beautiful. I'm so excited with the peppers and the tomatoes. The tomatoes just keep on growing. So that's it. More basil there. And that is it for the rainbow garden. Really cool. All right, let's go take a quick zip. I'm not going to go into the papayas. This is too long already. They're doing good. As you can see, we still have papayas. And I'm going to end up moving those other ones. Oh, a rabbit just left. And get something else done through here. And then I've got pomegranates. Gary's been picking pomegranates and bringing them in. This is from a seedling that I grew. So this tree is very special to me because I grew this tree. And there's more pomegranates in the back. It's not that old of a tree. It's just a few years old, if that. And that is basically it. Just a tomato plant there and then all the chairs. A field of chairs. Okay, let's go walk over to the wall. Okay, well, the moringa is doing okay. I've seen hummingbirds hanging around in it all the time. They like the flowers. So a few pods on there. The problem is it can't get a big root system here because there's very little soil. There's a, the retaining wall's got a footing that comes out about six feet. So it's just a small amount of dirt. So it's trying to send its roots in here. So we're not going to get it massive. Plus it's battling with all the other trees here that are stealing the water because we're in a severe drought. Though we may water a bit in our garden, nothing else is being watered around here. So the plants, the big trees are sending roots everywhere. What I've done here is I'm starting to line up the totes in the fashion of which I want to grow come spring or whenever. I may or may not put one more tote. I might spread the totes here. I'll have to decide and see how many extra totes I've got that I want to put here and maybe I'll put buckets in between. This way I might be able to grow a little bit in the soil that's there as well as keeping it up and off the ground. I like keeping things off the ground for multiple reasons. Well you know I've got a root problem. A plant dies I think I did something wrong or something got in there and then I find out no it wasn't a rodent or anything it was a root that got into one of the side holes and killed the plant so I've got to keep an eye on that so I try to keep all the holes here up it has been worse this year than ever before yes we have gophers gophers can't get into this there's no way but if they're too low see the holes here if they're too low and the soil gets past it I have found this year that even one root Depending on the type or species of tree that sends its roots in there, they can kill the entire plant in there. They swell up and they steal all the water and they just, well, that's what they do. They, they're at survival. So they're trying to get it. That's why, you know, they want all the water. Think of it. Look at all these trees here. You don't see plants growing under the trees. It could be these, you know, these trees could be robbing some of these totes it's I'm just using that as an example and then what they do is they put something out so they kill the other plants so they get all the water so you have to kind of my big thing is roots I have to kind of keep that in mind that I have to be mindful that when I'm watering or doing something I'm keeping the soil away from the holes so the roots don't get in there do have some cucumbers here but again I think we're past the season it's trying We'll see. I've got another one there, but I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll get some cucumbers down here. I've got some flowers down there, so we'll have to see. And then this is the moringas again. They're not going to do super good, but I don't need a giant moringa tree. A small one's good to grab some leaves to put in a green drink or something. That's just a geranium. It hasn't done anything. Probably, again, the roots probably are causing a problem. This one had an issue, but I'm not going to take the tomato plant out. I'm going to feed it some more compost tea. Where is my compost tea? Oh, it's down there. And I'm going to trim it back and see what happens. It could have been roots because I believe the squash was killed in here from the roots. But it didn't kill the tomato. It hindered the tomato. So we'll see what happens. Oh, just uh, I was composting in place and a bunch of squash seeds grew. So we'll see what happens there. Yes, a papaya. Obviously, a pile of papaya seeds got in there. So I still have to move them. Look at this. See, I don't think they'll grow good if I left the tote here. I have another option. If I don't want to disturb the papayas, I take the tote, don't do anything, and move it somewhere else in the yard that I want it, because I know there's not enough soil under here. Or I pull them all out and move them and let the best ones survive if they survive. Sometimes they don't like being moved. 
I really don't know because it doesn't matter. We've got a lot of papayas all over. Gary's got them. We got them in the front yard. We got them in his garden. They're everywhere. So I'll see. Look at this one pod on this little moringa. One pod to collect seeds from. And then I've got the tomatoes. There's another geranium down there. There's some squash still growing. I see some turned yellow, but we'll see what happens. It's too long. So we'll see what happens here. And then garlic chives. Oh, tomatoes. Tomatoes, fantastic. They keep growing. I need to do a better staking on them and get them off the ground. And that's it. Um, nothing else has been done here right now. I spread myself too thin. And I have too many gardens. And I take care of all of them myself. Once in a while, Gary might help me a little bit. He might water something for me if he's not doing it. Look at that. The bee can land on the plants that are growing on top. See, he's getting water. Isn't that cool? So once in a while, he'll help me with that. Otherwise, he said, you want to build another garden. It's going to have to be your responsibility because he's got his own stuff. And that's fine. And here, he hasn't really done much except he did finish that. So I'm little by little, I'll do it, but I don't care. And as crazy as it is, I've already got a new garden that I'm going to plant this spring in my head. It sounds crazy, but it's not going to take away from the others, so it's going to be okay. So I'm going to start a new garden. Let's see. That probably needs a cleaning. I've got so much hair algae in there. Oh, no, that's all it needed. It wasn't running. It just needed a, an on and off by just wiping your hand. So there's my little cement fountain. That's solar. These are pomegranate trees. These are Gary's cannas growing, and the hummingbirds love this and that is that little thing a neighbor gave me and that's well that's solar too it's a little bit bigger solar panel panel look at that it is really shooting so it's getting a lot of good sun and then i've got some succulent plants in here i had bought so many years ago i dug up around the yard and put in here so that's basically it isn't that pretty and then that's a solar fountain you probably can't see it but it's trickling down the brick see the pipe that comes up it's the hair algae in here that really gets to it. I have to clean it once in a while, but I haven't cleaned this in six months. But if you can see it trickling down the rock, and then where is the panel here? There's the panel in the pomegranate tree. And then Gary put these sticks here because the dragonflies have been flying around and they like a place to land. Though they'll land in bushes, they really li like a stick. So they've been flying around here. I don't see any. It's still too early. The sun is up now, but it's still too early. Okay, let's walk over here. There's that pomegranate tree. That one's not doing anything. Probably doesn't get, probably doesn't get enough water or plant food or doesn't get anything from me. I don't know, but it, I stuck it there, so it doesn't matter. And then I've got the truck bed. I had all these plans that didn't happen. So we'll get to it little by little over the winter. Gary filled it for me. And it isn't the soil that I use. What is going on back there? Well, just some squash plant growing back there. I'll probably end up, well, I'll end up like last time with a squash I can't get to. I've um, got old squash, see? You can see the old squash from last year still in there. It's probably why that one's growing. He put sand in here and it packed it really hard. I don't use sand. He uses sand. Everybody uses their own thing. So instead of digging it out, because I am not going to dig it out, I am going to layer this with buckets. By layering it with buckets with holes on the bottom, completely different than what I do everywhere else, the roots can go into the sand and just by having buckets full of leaves and plant matter and growing things in it, it will change the soil itself because that's what happens. That's what Mother Nature does. So it will change it. I won't have to do anything. Everything will leach out from the buckets into the soil that's in there and it will change the composition of the soil. So I've got one bucket in there. See, I've got this one I sat in here and I didn't plant anything in it. Mm -mm. I just sat it in there with some leaves with a little bit of soil I picked up from the ground and guess what? You got it. I got a tomatillo grew in there and a, this. And I'm going to leave the tomatillo. That's perfectly fine. And that's a black bucket that I found we, yeah, I found it. <laughs> it, did, I, it was in, uh, so I don't want to get into it. It was on somebody's property and I ran and got it. They said I could have it though. So I've got that one and then I'm going to get that lined in there and I'm going to have whatever I want. Each plant will have its own individual pot, which will be a bucket. And then I can pull the bucket out if I don't like the way it's growing and I can 
change it around. I can have different things growing. I mean, normally you don't want to have a squash and let's say a big zucchini and a tomato growing in one bucket or one tote really, even though I've done it because each plant is such a heavy feeder. You want to have plants that are not heavy feeders. So this way I could have one squash growing in one. I could have a type of tomato growing in something else. I could put whatever I want. It doesn't really matter. Eggplant. And I could line this with all kinds of stuff growing. Rabbits cannot get in here as long as I don't give them a stepping stool. They had something once and had babies in there. I don't have to deal with tree roots because if tree roots are coming through the truck bed and going up in there, I've got bigger problems to worry about at night when I'm sleeping with tree roots. I'll have nightmares. No, tree roots cannot get in there. So it's actually the perfect place. And then if something gets tall, it's got the rebar that Gary put in there a while back because we used to grow, oh, we had so much spaghetti squash. We got sick of it. We really never grew it again after that. This was full of squ spaghetti squash about I don't know, four or five, five years ago. And then I had tomatoes in here too. So I think the buckets will be the answer to that. And maybe I'll even touch up the truck bed a little bit white and put it back to its color. It was here when we bought the house and I tried to sell it, nobody wanted it. I tried to give it away, nobody wanted it. And it sat here and then one day we filled it with soil. Gary filled it up and said, we might as well grow in it. And now I like my truck bed and I wouldn't sell it or give it away. So I'm gonna line that with buckets. I have all winter, come out here, do one bucket. I've already got three of those almost full. The red one and the blue one is ready. I can plant in there at any time I want. The only reason I have it is I wanna go through and collect some Swiss chard seeds. I happen to like green Swiss chard over the red Swiss chard. The red one's kinda of got a bite. Gary can't eat it raw, but I can eat the green raw or cooked. And Gary can't eat the red raw. So I wanna get some Swiss chard seeds off and then I'm going to compost all that. I don't need that much Swiss chard growing. It's and now it's all gone to seed anyways because that's what you're looking at. This is all seeds, see? So I want to kind of go through and collect some seeds and I can even take the seeds in areas that I know has a lot of water and just drop them and they will grow. Here's the problem. Years ago I could grow Swiss chard like that. I came out after a rain a week later, the whole place was covered in Swiss chard. It was amazing. Just beautiful. This was years ago. Then the rabbits who would not touch Swiss, Swiss chard, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? They started to eat it and found out, oh, this is good. Now they eat it all. That's why you won't see Swiss chard growing wild on the ground because they got a taste to it. But I could throw the seeds anywhere. I could throw it around the bathtub, put a little cage over it or something, and just grow it wherever I want. So I'm going to collect some Swiss chard seeds, and then I'm going to just start composting everything. Look at all the soil I've got. I have a ton of soil in there by chopping all that down. Seeds and all. Don't clean it up. Just chop it, fill up the buckets halfway, and then top it with either potting soil or top it from soil from another tote. It doesn't have to be perfect soil because it's going to create its own soil from the branches and the leaves and the seeds, the seeds make good soil too. They may grow, but oh well, I can always pull them out and compost them right back in. Nectarine trees doing okay. We got what, three or four nectarines off of it. They're sage there, walking onions. These are my apple trees. I'm gonna trim them back too. And maybe I will get some better trees to plant here. I'm thinking in the spring, I might actually plant some other trees, but I wanna trim these back. And then of course, the chair garden that got neglected this year. You know, it might have been neglected, but we have had a lot of food off of this. Gary comes out here and picks his popolo. I didn't even have to think about where I'm gonna grow popolo this year. When we don't have cilantro, he has popolo. Even my neighbor came and got some popolo. So that worked out really, really good. I'm not a popolo eater, but he likes it. Tomatoes have not been a problem. I've needed to trim them back because once the Orioles left, the hornworm started up here and there and I didn't really do much. Usually I collect them off and do something with them. This time I kind of left them and the tomatoes kept growing. So we still have other birds coming in and picking them you know, off, but I didn't do much this year. And then I've got lettuce. See, the lettuce is growing. Just, just growing because there was lettuce in here. Here's another popolo that came up. Here is some collard. This I want out. This is celery seed. And I don't, celery grows everywhere. Look at the tomatillos. There's two of them in here. Look how it fell into a small pot. Let me see if I can get you in here. See the small pot? 
some seeds grew in there. I don't want the weed. You put the weed there. And there's all, see the celery? That's a celery. That's, let me move this. You can see that's a celery growing in there. This is a celery and it's coming from this plant here. I don't want any more celery. Still have the pepper from last year that I come pick peppers and it keeps growing peppers. Look, it's got more flowers. And then it's got more flowers there. This is really, it's kind of cool when you think about it because it's from last year. I didn't do anything. I've been picking tomatillos, obviously, tomatoes, more tomatoes. Oh, now here I did plant, that's right. You saw, I took all, a whole bunch, not all, a whole bunch of walking onions and stuck them in here and look how beautiful they are now. Some lettuce came up here. I could leave it or I can move it. I think I'll leave the lettuce. There's another one there. I'm not sure what the, oh no. Okay, now I know what it is. See that? That's not what I want in here. That's celery. So I am going to end up pulling all that out at some point, as soon as I know for sure it is celery, because celery I don't want. Celery will choke everything else out because it gets a massive root system. It's just too big. There's a big root system on celery, and lettuce won't, but celery will. And I can grow celery at any point. All I have to do is collect some seed, put it in an envelope, store it away, and if I want celery in a tote, Sprinkle some in there and I got celery. So celery grows here wild. I bought the green celery from somebody who said to me, once you buy it from me, you'll never buy it again. And they were not kidding. You don't need it. it. Grows like a weed. So that's it. So that's the end of the garden tour. I can't believe it's October. We're going into the holiday season. I know a lot of you are not thinking about gardening this year or, you know, until after the holidays into the first of the year. And that's fine. Take a break. Take a breather. Think about what you want, but collect your leaves. If you're not under snow and you've got leaves, just throw them in a tote, throw them in a trash can, throw them anywhere you want and collect them because they are your soil. Now, if you want to go out and just buy everything new, that's totally up to you. And it's good and it's fine, get good soil, but you can also mix it. And so though I do buy, do buy a little bit of potting soil to put on the top, I make all my own soil and I am very pleased with that. And saves a ton of money. Plus I do it mother nature style. So with that, I think I've done everything I could possibly do today. I'm quite happy with everything. We've had more than enough food. That's one thing we don't buy is produce. I don't have to buy any produce for Gary and I to eat. We've got everything here. So with that, I'm gonna go finish my coffee and I am gonna think about what I am gonna to do today. Yeah, I'm gonna bring this in and upload this onto YouTube. I wanna say thank you to all the people that have subscribed to the membership. It's wonderful, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So thank you all, a shout out to all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Broccoli. His garden tour, I get broccoli. You get broccoli all the time. Was it good? I do have one more piece. Took two pieces in. Kitty, do you give a shout out to Tuck from the gardening channel with James? I would say that's a yes. <laughs>